Good morning, everyone. James Nussbaumer. I am the author of The Master of Everything, a story of mankind and the world of illusion we call life, and its sequel called Mastering Your Own Spiritual Freedom. Both are lessons of A Course in Miracles, and I hope that you will take advantage of both these books soon. Uh, they're on sale everywhere books are sold by Ozark Mountain Publishing Company. But today I wanted to discuss about <clears throat> Uh, fearing change and not being able to make change, uh, for example, in that career that you may be stuck in, or whatever it might be, a relationship or what have you. But um, my blog basically is is about those people wanting to make some kind of a career move, but just don't know how to do it. A Course in Miracles states, when vision is denied, confusion of cause and effect become inevitable. <clears throat> and then the Course also adds, if you accept this change, you have accepted the idea of making room for truth. You know, the crisis of being stuck in a career that has you self-loathing, like once did for me, can be a lonely road. You've spent years trying to get to the top, but all along, you've been realizing it's not where you belong, and the effort you've poured into these years has drained you. Uh, you've established loyal relationships with associates and colleagues, and, and you're realizing that if you don't do something now, you may not ever make a change before something drastic may happen, whether with your life or a bad decision, as was with me, poor decision-making. <clears throat> that I'll explain here in a second for those of you that don't know me. But when you find yourself at this difficult juncture in your life and career, what do you really do? Well, some years before I went to prison for a foolish securities violation as a financial advisor, where I'd spent 25 years in that industry, I remember a business relationship I had with a small technology company that was experiencing tremendous growth. I had, uh, I had been given the small firm, been giving the small firm financial planning advice for some years. And uh, I'm, now at this point, I was also giving them a presentation as my goal, of course, was to was attain all the company employees and even go further with their investment portfolio. But I would advise them on investment decisions and, and to accelerate their portfolio as well as, like I mentioned, the employees within the company for their personal retirement portfolios and IRAs and things like that. It was a very good size account for me and my efforts paid off when they had signed on. <clears throat> The company, the company president, Bart, whom I had known for a few years, was in the same golf league as I was, and that's how we uh, connected uh, in a business sense. Bart pulled me aside one day while I was gathering a census at the company's main office, which I needed to prepare for, for the data that I needed to prepare. He saw that I was busy, but he asked that I step into his office for just a moment. He seriously, he seriously asked if he could ask me a very personal question, and I said, of course. He hesitated and then proceeded. He said, Jim, without offending you, what are you doing in the financial services business? He continued that he and his partner respected my knowledge and expertise, but, but they, they both sensed that I, I it really wasn't where I belonged. They both felt that I belonged somewhere else. He assured me that they were sticking by me in our business arrangement, but also wanted me to be aware that, that one of the reasons they went with me was that they understood. That kind of baffled me. I didn't uh, ask him what he meant by that, but I wondered, what is it that they understand about me? <clears throat> well, I never did ask, and neither of them volunteered. I simply nodded my head in agreement and went back to what I had been doing. Uh, with the work I needed to get done there within his company. It wouldn't be until much later that I would realize what he meant. When, he ex when we extend our grace, the grace about us, or our radiant light, we're simply extending that light over any darkness that remains, along with the light of others, <clears throat> which is the same light. It's the light of creation. But you cannot think about this in order for it to happen because it's quite confusing. Just like the opera singer doesn't, doesn't think about it when she's releasing her high note, it's, it's totally effortless. It's effortless. It's effortless because your true light is who you are. The others who live in their true light alongside you actually connect and form one light 
which is accepted and understood, as Bart was saying. One light is all there is, but it can be separated by cloud cover. Those who live in darkness will cover their eyes to you because initially they are suspicious and fearful of your light. This is only because these individuals are not on the same healing or readiness level. Nevertheless, they are still at one with you. They're just not realizing their own light or your light. It is, it is only that their light is obscured or covered by clouds at some level for the time being. But don't allow this to get in your way while the radiance that you are radiates because your radiance is surely intended to help shine through their obscurity. So when you're, when you're, when you're procrastinating on that career change, change that you know you need to make, you know, you're, you're not letting your radiance, you're not trusting your radiance to, to extend forward but you, you receive radiance from others in this way as well. It's, it's like the radiance that I was experiencing from the extension of Bart and his partner. <clears throat> Those who can glimpse your light will gradually begin to see their own light, which will gradually touch yours and connect to it. You also, you also found or realized your own light through the influences of someone else, maybe somewhere along the line, whether you are aware of it or not. No one likes to step out of the dark and abruptly into the light, that's for sure. By coming to an understanding of this, to gradually accept the light, to understand this concept of light, you are doing your part in humanity becoming whole and helping one another. You are both giving and receiving at the same time. If you recognize the light of another, you will also be acknowledging your own light. Nothing is easier than recognizing truth. If you're not operating from truth, you may temporarily fool others, excuse me. You may temporarily fool others, but you will know this, and I'm sorry to say that so will other true radiant individuals who will see that you are lost. If this is the case that you are not seeing the truth, you will not be able to see or hear your divine inner guidance system, also of the light, or what I call, and so does A Course in Miracles call, the Holy Spirit. Or, or, recognize, or you, you won't be able, without truth, you can't recognize his voice, which in myself, I call it pure thought of what it is I need to do next. What is it really in my heart that I need to do? The Holy Spirit can only guide the truthful. But don't be too hard on yourself if you do realize that you have not been, that you haven't been honest with yourself and that you haven't been living from your state of grace. Let me say that the very fact that you recognize this is truth in itself. And this recognition is the beginning of the undoing process of your heirs, of the clearing away of the cloud cover by the Holy Spirit. This is your knowledge now, and the Holy Spirit led you to it. Therefore, be real with yourself by accepting this knowledge as your first step of leaving the dark. The obscurity starts to lift. Now you have the knowledge to move forward as slowly as you need to and understand you are moving in the right direction or what we can call a right-minded direction that is, as, is that I explain thoroughly in my books. But also understand that slowly, the pace of slowly isn't an illusion because there is no such thing as time in regards to slow or fast where divinity is concerned or oneness of mind. Therefore, you may want to ease up on yourself. Just accept the fact that this hold of the cloud cover or the ego-based mind that I call in my books has been a difficult release, especially with no support from the outside world. And just go ahead and give yourself some credit as you give the Holy Spirit a little smile, letting him know you understand. I'm sure you know um, what I mean about the truth in your heart, don't you? But if you have questions or reservations about whether or not uh, you know for sure or have a doubt about a particular situation or circumstance that you feel needs changed, you can be sure that your doubts 
are due to the ego flexing its muscles for defense. Also keep in mind that your doubts or questions spring from the environment you were born into. But these doubts are nothing that, what I also call them, these doubts are nothing that your spiritual flashlight, which is what I call in my books, the light that you are. So what I'm, what I'm trying to say, your doubts can be put away, can be put behind you by shining your spiritual flashlight, turning it on and that light about you, the truth about you, shine that light of truth right on the doubts and just like darkness fades to light, doubts or darkness, they fade away. So shine that natural light of truth directly on those feelings of doubt and get a good look at them for what they really are. Allow your doubts to approach the light as, and, and as they do, they will just simply fade away. Once again, remember to use your spiritual flashlight without being emotional and simply just be done with it by moving on. Here you have a defining moment then. In that defining moment, you will be truthful with yourself when you realize that you are healing another mind when that person recognizes your own radiance and you are being healed as well. And being healed just means simply bringing darkness to the light where the darkness fades away and the light remains. So when you're being healed, you will recognize the radiance in others too. We were created as a wholeness. We were not even aware of, and this healing with all of creation or humanity, we could say to keep it simple, is acknowledgement of our power to co-create with our creator, which I call God. What else could we call this healing light other than the power of our creation? You know, <clears throat> while I was in prison, I recently I had, I had uh, received, um, and then recently after that, a few other letters, follow-up letters from Bart and his partner separate. But Bart, the president, wanted to write of the technology company, wanted to let me know that through modern technology, him and his partner w were able to research the facts about my incarceration and find out what actually happened. And they wanted me to know how sorry they were to hear about my problem. But And he informed me that he had also looked up to me. But his letter was deeply encouraging, and believe me when I say that receiving a letter of this fine magnitude while behind bars is tremendously uplifting. The letter also arrived during a dark time for me, a time where the cloud cover just didn't seem to lift, when I was able to see his light from the letter he had sent me, and a few others to follow. Bart went on to say how he'd sold his share of the company to his partner and no longer had any dealings with the business nor regrets. Bart sold his home as well, a much needed career change. And yes, moved to Florida where he purchased an old rundown golf course. He tells me he has fixed up the old course and, and I haven't played there yet because he's uh, got onto some other business ventures along with the, the, the golfing business, which he loves. But he tells me that he'd fixed up the old course and, and the old rundown course and it's, it's in great shape. And, he tells me that I'm welcome to play there anytime that I wanted to. And, um, you know, and I, I realize now that I now realize what Bart, you know, had meant, you know, a while back in those days in his office when he told me that he understood. Hey, I hope this makes sense, everyone. And I'd like to quickly add that you can read this blog if you're at my YouTube channel. Uh, by clicking the link down below in the description box, which there's also some information there on a system I use to claim real abundance. But if you're already at my blog and you're watching the video there, then you'll know that down below is, is the, it, it, that this video is inside the blog. So you have it right there. And there's some links uh, for my real abundance uh, opportunity that, that I use to claim real abundance. If you'd like to, to go there, it goes directly to that page at my website. So thanks for putting up with me today, everyone, and um, keep the light shining and keep it fading away darkness, and God bless. Thanks again.